Hello everyone, my name is John Hammond and I wanted to showcase some of the All Army Cyber Stakes. So this was ACI CTF, uh, cyberstakes.acictf.com. They put on a competition throughout this past week and they had a lot of fantastic challenges so I really wanted to showcase some of them to you. So hopefully this will be the first video that I'm recording. I hope to do many, many more. Uh, what I want to do is actually start with some of the harder challenges that I was able to solve so I don't burn out when I'm trying to record all these because there are a lot of them and uh, I'd still like to be able to showcase all of them for you, or as many as I can. So this challenge is called Extremely Malicious Language. It was worth 300 points, I guess, at the time of recording right now. Uh, 32 people have solved it. It's currently Friday. The game ends on Sunday. So I want to get this recording in before they took some of the challenges down. It says, there's a sick cyber map. See if you can gain RCE to execute dot slash flag. Okay, so if I fire this up in another page, looks like I'm greeted with just sort of a little login over here that requires a username and password. Um, LastPass is trying to fill some stuff in for me. Uh, so when I fill that in just with given credentials, I don't admittedly, I, I can't guess what they are. So I don't know exactly what to do on that. And I don't want to add these to LastPass. So um, truth be told, and I'll be as transparent as I can be with all of you, um, because this is running out of the Pico CTF framework, a lot of fantastic stuff in here, they do offer hints for some of these challenges. And I like to be open and honest with you, this is all about learning, this is all about education, this is all about us trying to sharpen our skills, so if there's no, like, point degradation, or if they don't, if they don't cost anything to take a hint, I'm gonna look at the hints. I think that's interesting, but that, that's cool, right? When a black hat crosses your X path, when a dark entity can reveal a lot about your operation. Ah, okay. Take command of the system and check out source.zip if you're stuck. Oh, is that just a thing we can access if I try to go to source.zip? Okay, looks like that is just a thing I can download. So let me actually create a directory for us to start to work in this. I'll create a little ACI. And then I will go ahead and W get that down. Well, let's actually make a challenge name for this. Extremely malicious language. Hop over there. Now we'll W get that source file. It is a zip file, so we can go ahead and unzip it. It looks like it gives us web root, web root, web root, web root, and all these PHP files. So, okay, looks like we're working with PHP then. Uh, let's take a look at the index.php. Let me uh, pause to kind of clear up my sublime text notes here. Okay, I also noticed my webcam was a little off, so hopefully that's a little bit better of me, and I'll try and shrink that down if it gets too big. But anyway, this is the source code for our index. It will load in funks.php. Looks like that's necessary for the page. And if we are logged in, oh, it will, okay, offer us a page to log out, and it will try and bring us to GenMap and create a little text area form. Okay, if we aren't logged in, that PHP else statement there, it says post to login.php with text username. Okay, this is the input fields that we are looking at. So funks.php we should totally check out along with login.php. So let's take a look at that. My face is in the way already. I'm just gonna shrink me. Okay, now let's go check out that login. PHP. Require funks, login start, and it will log in with post username and post password. So it looks like those are the just the entry fields that I'll need to supply. They'll get passed in with the HTTP method of post to that form, and login is probably a function inside of funks.php. So let's fire that up. Oh, okay. It looks like we have functions to parse XML, and that must be back on the index page what this form is. XML hole, <laughs> cyber map, CN, country. Okay, so these are forms we could give to XML. Read creds, function my file will open creds.xml. Do, do we have that file? LS, do we not have creds.xml? Is it on the page? Is that something we can access? Creds.xml, ah. Doesn't have any style information associated with it, but user is admin and pass is empty. Does that work? If I just log in with admin and nothing? Okay, now we're logged in. So we have this entry 
little text area where we could supply seemingly some XML and then generate it. And there's that login button that we saw. So let's go ahead and click this. Okay. We, we generated a map, it seems, with some of the countries that were probably in this prefix here. Maybe highlighted. Oh, generate. Yeah. Okay. So let's look more at kind of what that's what that's doing because we have the source code. So log in. That function will read out of the creds that we just got from read creds. Is that an XPath? Oh yeah. Maybe that's something that we could have seen. Like if I were to log out. Log in. That doesn't have it either. Huh. I didn't pay too much mind to that XPath. I will totally admit. So... We had the source code and we could go ahead and log in now that we found where that location is and that is what it allows us to do. So back in that index page, it looks like once we post our input in that text area, it'll go to genmap.php. So let's go see what that is. Do we have that source code? Yep, we do. Okay, acquires funks again, creates a session for us. Genmap is what is being ran, maybe? Not yet, it seems like. So it needs a name entry out of the XML. It needs at least one country. And that's supposed to be an array. And it'll validate that each country has two capital letters in it. And that looks pretty s solid. I can't use like a, there's no E or I. I can't control that regex to do anything interesting with PHP that might give me some potential code execution with that avenue. So that looks sound, at least from first glance, right? Target, what? It goes to itself to make.php and passes in these arguments, the countries that we supplied, the ones that were validated, and the name, and then it will make a curl request with these. Curl exec challenge, okay. Otherwise, it'll output die on generating that map. Okay, and then, it, and then it will run it with all the input that we supplied and output that out. Okay, so we could totally just finagle this to whatever we want, right? Um, please subscribe. Generate. Okay, and that put it in the title up here. So if I view the source on that web page, looks like the title of that page is what's being returned. Using the countries might be annoying because we're limited in what we can supply. OL. It has to be only two letters. Anything with a typo in it. Whatever. Maybe, okay, maybe it just didn't care. It just throws those out. That's fine. So looking at this, it looks like we have an interface to work with XML. So uh, I guess we can kind of gather that off of the name of this challenge, Extremely Malicious Language, or XML. The whole point is that this could potentially be an XXE attack, and that might be referenced in this other hint here, a dark entity can re reveal a lot about your operation. So maybe we could run some of those external entities that are necessary for an XXE attack. So I'll search for payload all the things, XXE injection, uh, I have this kind of in my history because I obviously done this previously. So what we could be doing with XXE is usually like load files or read some specific files or perhaps uh, load another entity or a DTD or document type definition and maybe exfil some data out of that server. So this will be kind of interesting to be able to determine whether or not we can actually get code execution. So... Let's start to let's start to finagle this. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'll create a just in this current directory here, just a, a test or a poc.xml, I guess, like a proof of concept, and I'll copy and paste that payload that's just a, a proof of concept from payload all the things, and I'll go ahead and grab in the same definition that I might need from what the page supplies, because we're probably going to need to keep the exact same element name. So we'll need CyberMap and the name and country, etc. Uh, I don't think I need that, but doc type replace example there. So that will just replace that in. So if I change cyber map to 
that example syntax. It'll get the value that we read out of this entity that XML is going to be providing for us because of that XXE abuse here. So it should say cyber dough if that works. So I'll slap that in, generate it, and there we go. So I can see over in the title here that says cyber dough. Okay. So what could we do with this, right? Um, if we go back at the XXE, we could be able to use this to actually get information out of the file system. We could read files. That would be handy. Um, we could try and read file that's at repassword because that looks like a simple proof of concept. The syntax that they change here is just using system as kind of the prefix. And I guess test works fine here. Let's try and finagle that. Um, they're using a different setup. Doc type, doc type, all this. And they have a new line on XXE. That's what they're referring to. Let's let's just let's copy that and try that guy. Doc type foo, element foo could be any entity XXE will read from a specific file for us. So let's try that. Now it's no longer called example, but the variable is going to be XXE. And we'll slap that in to the little test around there. Nope, okay, that had an error. Um, we could try, well, it's weird to me because when we, when we look at this earlier, it's only filling this in at the line for the title. Maybe if it has a multiple lines in that output, it'll get kind of a, annoyed and freaked out. So let's try something else that might actually only have one line in it, like host name, and we'll see if that actually returns for us or if it's our syntax that's wrong. Oh no, 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 that works. So if I view the source here, now it says cyber challenge.prod, so a little production challenge, I guess, but that is the value inside of our etc. host name file. So that could work, potentially. Uh, looks like we can read files, but we still are kind of limited in what files we can read because well, it's, it's limited by a line, right? So let's try and expand on this. We know that PHP is installed. So if I keep looking at some of these payload, all the things here, they might be using some other techniques to maybe use a PHP filter or a PHP wrapper to be able to read some of these files or get some access here. They're using that uh, filter, converting it to base 64 and then specifying a specific resource. So let's use that. And then let's try and read, et cetera, password again. So et cetera password will be the final resource that we need. We'll go slap that in for our XML and that seems to fail. Okay, is there anything else we could read that might be worthwhile for us? Well, we could try and get just the source code, like index.php is what we know the name of the source code is. So let's paste that in. And that seemed to work. If I view the source now, we have this giant base64 string so let's verify that that is exactly what we expected. Let me copy that, open up a simple terminal here. I'll just echo all of that noise into base64 tag D. And okay, we are getting in fact the same index.php that we saw. So we could potentially read the source code of the web page. We could get some of the valuable information that's kind of behind this application. Interestingly enough, though, when we were looking through the source code that we retrieved, that we were able to download with that source.zip, it mentioned in that genmap function, or the genmap.php script, it's calling out to make.php. So is that something we could access? Can I get to make.php kind of on my own? Make.php, unauthorized locals only. That's weird. Well, we don't have access to this page, I guess, from the outside, but we know with our XXE attack, we could read in a file, and it doesn't matter if it has new lines now, because we learned about that PHP filter trick. Maybe we could actually access that make.php page. Let's see if um, we slap this in. Will that work for us? Can I read the source code of make.php? Nice, looks like it got that base64. So let me try and get this here. That uh, will throw into our terminal again, just to base64 decode it. Uh, pipe that to base64 tag D, and I'll redirect it to our make.php. So I could subble that, get some good syntax highlighting. 
And it says, remote address is not working because containers are the future and the future is now. Okay. This should effectively restrict the local requests only. So that was the error that we saw. It looks like only itself can request this page. Only the application or what's running on challenge.aci. So I can't reach it from my own browser like we just tried. Okay. So what we do if this page actually gets to execute and what's really happening when we make this request in GenMap, when we give it our XML, it will take the countries that this page has validated and it will run them in a expression or it looks like a command. It looks like it's running said with joining all of the country variables Okay, just so piping them together, not piping them, but making them an or statement like for regular expressions for said. And all of that is filled with a world.svg. And that's the file that it must use. Okay, and then it just displays it all out. Echo that with the name in there with HTML special characters. So probably no like cross-site scripting or weirdness. But anyway, it's running shell execute. It's like running commands. And we have potentially a vector to get some code execution in there because it's working with that get variable or the country that we can supply. But we know that limitation of having only uppercase, two uppercase letters in the country. So that doesn't work all that well for us, except because we could use this XXE attack, maybe we could have it request this page. Can it request like any page that we want? Like if I just, so let me, let me get to my server. I'll just go up to a location out in the real world that's not behind, that, that would actually have a, like let, let's make a directory uh, XML, get in there and then let's run a simple HTTP server. I'll use Python 3. I think Python 2 is still what's alias is to regular Python on quad eight. So if I were to go access johnhammond.org at 8888, I see myself, that's good. Can I make that web page go to it? If I change that payload, can I, maybe I could use it with the PHP response with the, with the filter here. So let's HTTP colon slash slash johnhammond.org at Quad eight, move all this in. Please get me back to a page where I can actually use the XML, good. Oh, that rendered and I saw the request. Okay, fantastic. So if I view this, now I have the base 64 output of that. Good, good. Echo, let's just verify that that actually is returning what we would expect it to, base 64 tech D. Good, that gets the HTML of the response from the server. So we could make this application call that make.php page or reach out to it. And maybe it could, oh, it, it won't try and validate the country variable. Only the GenMap script does. So we could have unlimited access to what that country variable might be. And we might be able to break our way out of this command that's being executed, that's running. So if I look at this, let me just kind of sketchboard this out here. Said works with an expression. Make this all on one line. It joins me in to single quotes. Single quotes. So that's the command. So if I break out of single quotes said might fail, but it will still work, right? And then it adds in the country. Let's try that in the terminal. Let me close that. And then let's just like, let's run a stupid said command. Um, and if, if this were where I was injecting other commands, something that maybe we could get the server to run, we could close out of our single quote and then have a colon or semicolon to start a new command and then do something like ID. So said will whine, but that doesn't matter. I don't care. I want the output of that command. So maybe we could get that to work if we give it a country list and a name. 
literally anything. So let's try that. Let me try to get to that page. How do they how do they access it in GenMap? Do they reach it on the port? They do. They reach it on the port. So make.php with some of the get variables in there. And I want that all to be URL encoded because it might do some weird things inside of XML, inside of XXE. So let me try and do that. I think that's in Python. So Python 3, yep, that's fine. Import URL lib dot parse, right? Yeah, so URL lib dot parse dot URL encode. And that takes a, a, a dictionary, doesn't it? Yeah, okay. So we want our country as a list to have a single quote, a semicolon, and then a command. And then uh, let's add a comment just to remove the whole rest of that, that, that line there. And then we will supply a name that can be literally anything that we want. That can be please sub, sure. So now those are going to be the arguments that we would give to that call in our XML, right? So when we use PHP filter to get the base64 response returned from this web page that we can call locally with the arguments of country to be whatever we want and please sub as the name. Let's try that just to see what we could do. Generate. That worked, okay. So checking this out, we have all this base64 here. Let's go ahead and see what that responds with. Uh, crap, I probably need that because I want to be able to edit that again. Let me uh, import URL lib one last time. URL lib, whoa, dot parse. And let's make a new shell just so I can echo this string into base64, tag D, and it returned the output of the ID command. Oh my gosh, excellent. Okay, okay. So we have code execution, right? We could potentially run commands. What can we do? We would like to get a reverse shell, right? I mean, ideally, but I don't know what we have actually accessible on that machine. So let's see what commands might work. Let's go back and, and copy our URL lib syntax here. So the commands that we want to run, uh, let's see if we have curl, curl. Let's see if we have netcat. Let's see if we have wget. Let's see if we have Python. And let's actually check out what directory we're in. So uh, we could script this. Uh, when I have tried to do this, PHP and the XML stuff didn't seem to behave when I had Python send along. I didn't find out why, nor did I particularly care to, honestly, but this method wasn't all that bad. Just kind of creating it and then sending it along and grabbing all that HTML out. So let's see now if we echo this guy into base64 tag D. What have we got? We have curl, we have netcat, we have wget, and we seemingly have Python, and we're in this path for the web root. Okay, so if we have curl, then we could just download a PHP reverse shell. Could we not? I need to be back on my server, so let me try to netcat lnvp quad8 to listen and wait for that. So we have something out there on the internet for it to connect back to. And let's go create, I have another shell open here that I'm working with. So let's go make a reverse shell that we could host also on that server. So, okay, Let, anyway, let's move into that directory. So ACI, extremely malicious language, let's copy our opt reverse shell or PHP reverse shell, right? Over to this directory. Let's subble that and let's make it connect back to 
johnhammond.org because that's what I'm going to use as my kind of BYOB, bring your own box, all on quad eight. And let's actually move that to like revshell.php just so it's nice and easy for us. So now, now let's go put that over on my machine. So SCP of revshell over to johnhammond.org out there in the world, in the cloud and home John XML, right? Okay, good. So now we can SSH to johnhammond.org and spin up a simple web server just as we had previously. So that victim could go ahead and download the rev shell and give it to PHP because PHP is probably already installed because it's running PHP, right? So Python threat tech three, Python three, sorry, tack M, HTTP.server. Let's open it on quad nine. Um, let me make sure that my firewall is totally cool with that. Yep, it is. Okay, let's spin that one more time just so I can see the output. And let's make our command, which needs to be in this URL in coded form. Let's make him go ahead and curl HTTP colon slash slash johnhammond.org on quad nine revshell.php and let's pipe that to PHP. So once that downloads, it will go ahead and access this netcat shell, which is waiting and listening. That's going to catch our reverse shell. Let's try that. That URL encoded output needs to be what we supply as our argument. So let's make these both visible and let's go fire this up. Paste that in here, generate. So it reached back to the server, there we go. And we have our shell. Okay, fantastic. So uh, did we have Python? We, it said we had Python, user bin Python. Will that work for me? User bin Python, tax C, print, hello. Hello, okay. So user bin Python, tax C, import PTY, PTY.spawn, bin bash. Just to get a stable shell, great. Let's background that, STTY raw minus echo and foreground that. And now let's export term equals X term. Now I can clear my screen and work with things nice and easily. Okay, I'm in the root directory. Where the heck was I? We had that output. Do I have a home? I don't have a home. Oh, well, okay. What was the path to that? We saw it just a moment ago. Opt problem something. Did we have that in here? No, that was, oh, there we go. Op problems, extremely malicious language all the way to their web root. So let's get back to that other shell where we are interacting with the target. Let's paste that in. Wow, that screwed up my prompt. Uh, let's export PS1 to equal the literal dollar sign. There we go. Okay, LS flag. Nice, so ls tag la flag is actually a binary. I went ahead and ran file on it and it could see like that's an executable. So if I dot slash flag, there we go. That's the solution. That's the answer. That's the flag that would get us 300 points. So a little bit of a long winded challenge with a lot of cool moving parts, right? So a website that has XXE in it so, or at least it's vulnerable to XML external entities. We could use that to read files. We could use some of the PHP filters to read files in a filtered way, like with base 64 encoding. And that would allow us to go ahead and actually get files that are longer than one line because we could do it with the name, but it, we were kind of limited in the functionality of that country variable we could supply. So we were able to go ahead and actually use the 
local file inclusion that we essentially just had to go read the other source code and the other pages of the website that we wouldn't normally have had access to. And we found there is one endpoint, make.php, that is actually running a command with our input, like with an HTTP get variable. And if we were to request just that page, like locally, because it needed to be accessed through itself, again, using our XXE attack, we would be able to run code. We just needed to break out of the said command that was already running, and then we could get whatever we wanted to. We had code execution at that point, so we could try and get a reverse shell, so we could access it, and then, well, now we have the flag and we have access to that machine. So super duper cool challenge. I really hope you guys liked it. Um, 300 points, so hopefully it was one of those big hitters, one wham bam stuff, but uh, that's all I wanted to showcase for this challenge, for this video, Extremely Malicious Language. I hope to be recording a lot more of these. I hope there are, there are actually a ton that I want to get through, and I think a lot of these would be really, really cool to show you. So, all right. That's it for this this video, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Please click, click that like button. Wow, I'm fading out. <laughs> I've been talking for too long. Hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, hit the bell, all the other YouTube algorithm stuff. And I'd love to see you guys on Patreon. Thank you so much for your support. PayPal, if you're willing to drop something quick and easy. See you on the Discord. There's a link in the description. Instagram, Facebook, twink, twinked in, <laughs> litter. Oh God, I need to stop this video. Thanks everybody. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.